Fortunately, Hurricane Ian didn't come here, uh, but if it did, it, we'd be going uh, to maybe rescue fish versus video fish. So we hope the best for the people in uh, the west coast of Florida, Fort Myers, and that whole general area we got really slammed uh, by Hurricane Ian. So we're heading over to Miami Beach today and we're going to get a good look at the saltwater pond. It's about 2,000 gallons. It's been running for a little more than eight weeks now. And I'm going to give you a full tour of the whole filtration system and how we put it all together from the very beginning of the, the blueprints of this house to where it is today. It's going to be really awesome. Well, we're back over here on Miami Beach today and we're going to go on inside to the home and see the saltwater pond and um, we come bearing gifts. You can see literally in this eight week period how tremendous the pond is really becoming, how well the mangroves are growing. You can see some old leaves. You can actually see some grass that grew on the base of the mangroves. This little guy in the corner is doing super well too. We're putting about a gallon a week in there. You can see all the new leaves on the top of the mangrove. And it really gives it a three-dimensional look. When you come down the stairs and you look into the pond, you can see the fish down there swimming along. The storm has passed and we're getting some good sunlight in. So you're getting to see how much lumens are actually coming into the pond. And as Sanjay would say, a photon is a photon is a photon. So we just added a discosoma mushroom right down here. It had some little rocks on the bottom and there's some areas in the pond where there's less flow, which works out great for mushrooms and areas with higher flow, green star polyps and uh, areas and leather corals and stuff like that. So it's gonna be kind of cool. We got recordias, leathers, star polyps, zoanthids. I mean, it's really gonna be fantastic with the shallow water. With the sunlight, you can really see how the corals are reacting naturally. Uh, we have our three Gen 5 radions with the blues going off, staying on into the evening. I haven't seen it at night yet, but I'm sure it looks spectacular. You can see the stingrays that are getting hand fed every single day. The stingrays will come over and eat right out of your hand. The blue tangs, the hypopus, this great school of antheus, the yellow tangs, the naso tang. You got green chromis and blue chromis and convict tangs and powder brown tang. It's just really super successful. But there was a lot of planning to get to the point to have this indoor saltwater pond. And very few people actually have anything like this. You have your surface strainer right here where the water comes off and skims off the top of the pond. There's a whole series of pipes that run from the center of the pond around the perimeter of the pond where the water returns in. And then this line set with the drainage and the returns runs under here and straight down this path somewhere under the ground and then into the garage back there. And we're gonna show you where all the magic happens in the garage. So the home is getting a full-size generator right now. Yeah, look at this one. That is a big generac that's going installed now. So we're gonna have backup power soon enough that'll be operating for the whole entire house. So if we did have a Hurricane Ian show up, we'd have a full pack of power that's automatic ready to go in the house. So this is a really interesting spot. We've got a small little Bentley in here right now and the lift is up and elevated, but the only way to really get in the doors until they modify it is I can open the doors a little bit, uh, but you have to pull the car out, pull the car lifter out and down, and then you can open the doors all the way. So we'll get a good look at it right off the bat. So basically we have the opposite of what you would have in a normal reef aquarium. Normally, the sump is below the aquarium and the aquarium is above the sump. Well, we did the converse here. So you've got your Deltec protein skimmer right here, doing super well. Oh, look at that beautiful scum right there. That's wonderful. You have your fluidized media reactor there and you got your fluidized calcium reactor operating right now. We've got our full array of test kits. Uh, we've got some clear water scrubbers 
running over here now. You can see the algae is starting to grow real well. I think Geo cleaned those on Monday. This great little split air conditioner in here. So this room I can run at about 74 degrees constantly. You have your aqua ultraviolet sterilizer right here operating. You have your ozone reactor and ozone functioning right there. You have your DI RO filter with the DI cartridges on there giving purified water to the space. And then even out through the wall here, we have pipes that go through the wall to the chiller and then back in to the house. So there's actually a chiller running outside right now, keeping the pond also cold, plus this room cold, plus the ambient temperature in the house. So there is a heater too, just in case originally, you know, you never know what the temp profile is gonna be. You're in Florida, but there is a uh, titanium heat element right there. And that also is important in case they want to keep the house super cold. Who knows? Some people want to keep their house at 65 degrees and that's too cold for a marine reef pond. I still have the original four Kemi Pure Grandes. There's a fifth one over in that corner over there. That really got the pond super crystal clear. So now we're gonna slow back for a couple months, get a lot of coralline algae going throughout the pond. What we'd really like to see is the pond black floor even to become purple coralline, all the rocks to become purple with the coralline growing. So we're actually pushing water into this area here that's flowing into the, the sump. It's a closed loop filtration. So there's two strainers underneath a rock area with a barrier in there and some mesh on it so crabs and snails and stuff like that couldn't get through. But those two intakes are pulling in, going straight to the pump and then going recirculating back into the pond. So your massive current is where you see that coming through. Um, so we do have two dedicated uh, Pentair uh, pumps in that are digital and you can ramp them up or ramp them down on speed. And that gives us all the current that we really need in such a large body of water, which is 2,000 gallons. So your two Pentair pumps are here and the open loop pump, which runs back in to the sump and then gravity drains back through a siphon into the pond in the dead middle. And the reason that was put into Play was the fact that we wanted to automatically feed the pond without having to just use the little simple feeder that's there. So we have liquid feeds going into the pond. They're in this beautiful little refrigerator up here. So this is automatically going off several times a day in the daytime hours. And that food goes and drains over there by the intake siphon back in the corner. You can see the pipes up there high. The food will go into there and by gravity go out of the middle of the pond under that white rock. So there, it's getting directed two di different directions. It gives the food to the fish on an automatic basis. And that's what helps us really keep the anthias and other fish like that that are really planktonic feeders. So they're constantly feeding all the time when they're in the ocean. It's a super cool system. You've got a retention curve here. You got a drain for the sump right there. So if anything spilled inside here or there was a drip or whatnot, it would go out into the drainage and not onto the floor into the garage. All of this was on Blueprint and we made modifications in here to help facilitate getting good communication. You can see a Cisco uh, repeater right there for the Apex unit so we can see on our telephones when uh, the, and control even what we're doing for the feeds or different elements of, of what we want to monitor. Temperature obviously is the main one, power disruption, stuff like that. People wouldn't, couldn't even imagine. I mean, how do you keep that pond running? Well, this is a lot that makes it successful, helps to facilitate stability and a really healthy uh, coral reef pond in your home. So we still have some leftover wind coming from the west from Hurricane Ian. Going out here to Biscayne Bay, you can see how rough it is still with this west wind. Lots of little debris and seaweed in the water. But it really is spectacular to come back years later and build this really special pond 
into this brand new residence here on Miami Beach. Super awesome.